Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to another video. So for today's video, I thought I would do a get ready with me, do my makeup and tell you about my diabetes. I don't really talk about it a lot on my channel, but I am type one diabetic and I thought I would tell you sort of the simple facts to type one diabetes, how I got diagnosed and the products that I use to cope with my diabetes and to help it be a little bit easier for me day to day. I'm also going to do a small series on my channel where I show you more in depth the products that I use and to kind of explain everything to you but I thought I would start off with this video where I kind of explain an overview of diabetes. If you wanna hear how I deal with diabetes, how I got diagnosed, and also like what products I use, just keep on watching. Okay, so that intro was a little bit much, like oh my word. So I have actually had to write down some notes just so I don't get off track because there's quite a bit that you could talk about with diabetes. So I'm just gonna do my makeup, how I usually would. I'll link down below all the products that I use in this video for you guys. Oh, I have got some spots at the minute. My skin is having a bit of a um, meltdown, shall we say. So, I'm going to start. So when this ch this video goes up, I'm currently recording it on New Year's Eve. Awesome, I know. Obviously, we can't do anything else, so I'm gonna sit here and talk about me. I have been diagnosed this year, will be my 10th year of having diabetes. So I was diagnosed when I was 11. I'm now 21, or going to be 21 this year, which is scary because I feel a bit old. And everyone tells me I'm not, but I feel like I'm old. Also, I thought I'd share my diagnosis journey just to kind of raise awareness of diabetes, just because I know a lot of people that I had no idea about diabetes. And even when I was taught about diabetes at secondary school, it wasn't taught in a lot of detail. It's kind of like a 10 minute kind of lesson that we had on diabetes which is a real shame because there are so many people that have diabetes in the world whether that be type 1 or type 2 which I will come back to later on on the differences so yeah I was 11, 11 years old normal 11 year old just finished primary school enjoying summer holiday before I started secondary school and kind of got into like like adult life if you say and I was never a big one to drink water or anything like I could go a whole day and not drink a single glass of water come to the summer and I'm suddenly downing glasses of water like I was so dehydrated it was like a thirst you could not quench which I know is kind of like a symptom for other things as well but yeah it was like a thirst I couldn't quench in August of 2011 I went on holiday with my family we went to Alton Towers we stayed up north with my auntie and I just I couldn't stop I was having sugar donuts I felt so ill and I thought oh maybe it's maybe it's just I'm hot to be honest I didn't think there was anything wrong with me but I think it's because it was kind of like a slow progression it just suddenly got a lot worse and I didn't really notice it because I don't know, I was 11 years old, didn't really think anything was wrong with me. I'd been healthy, I say healthy, I had an allergy, that's about it. So I thought, mm, there's nothing wrong, I must just be really thirsty. And my parents thought, finally, she's drinking. Finally, don't have to worry about it. She's actually drinking, she's sort of looking after herself now, perfect to start secondary school don't have to worry about anything. I then came home and I went to London with my grandparents. Um, but while we were there, I suddenly felt really ill to the point where I thought I was going to collapse. And I drank my bottle of water, I drank my cousin's bottle of water and my nan's to try and quench this thirst that I had. And it just was not going, which if you can tell, thirst is like a big one for diabetes because your body's trying to get rid of the sugar in your system that it can't because you're not producing the chemical that you need. Basically, I came back from London. I had like a massive jug of water and I mean massive. And then I went to the toilet and I came back down and I had another massive like jug of water. I'd have at least two of those a night just with dinner, which is insane, absolutely insane. I don't actually think I've got any pictures of myself from this time. So yeah, I that, that was how it started. And then my nan spoke to my parents and got them to take me to the doctors because they thought there was nothing wrong. They thought, oh, she's just, she's finally drinking. She's healthy, she's fine. But my nan used to be a nurse. She was a, she's a retired nurse. And she knew there was something wrong. She knew that there was something very, very wrong with the whole situation. And she sat me down. I think it was about the 24th of August. Don't like quote me on it. I know it's the bank holiday weekend that year. And my nan sat me down and said, we think you've got diabetes. I cried. One, I didn't know what that was. 
because I'd never really been taught about it. I thought it was something that bigger people have, which is a very common misconception. And two, I thought I was going to end up being really, really ill and I don't know. So I got taken to the doctors by my dad. And the first thing my dad said to the doctors was, I think we're wasting your time, but... Which, th looking back on it, is very true because we didn't think there was anything wrong. So it did feel like we were kind of wasting the doctor's time. They did a blood test, like a, um, I don't really know how you'd call it, like a sugar test. That's it. And they took my blood sugar level and it was off the chart. Like, there was no way of calculating it. It just said HI which is above about 34, which my sugar should be between, or an average person's sugars, should be between eight and four, about that. My sugar should be between four and 10. So yeah, they were like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't right. So I got sent to the hospital and that's where I got diagnosed with diabetes. I spent three days in the hospital. I then came out and on the Wednesday, which was three days after I left the hospital and started doing injections for myself, I started secondary school. Which is crazy, it is absolutely crazy, but I'm so proud of myself and I've actually made it nearly 10 years of having diabetes. That's kind of my diagnosis story. I'm gonna carry on and tell you a bit more about like the ups and downs of diabetes. But first I'm gonna go off camera and just do my eyebrows because as you guys know, I hate doing them on camera. But I'll be back in a minute. So I've done my eyebrows, they look a bit wacky. I'm very sorry, it is currently nine o'clock <laughs> and I'm doing my makeup but you know we we live and we learn so I'm now going to talk about the positives which sounds a bit crazy considering it's a condition basically in simple terms diabetes as a whole is when your body cannot produce a hormone called insulin which basically if you imagine sugar as being a lock and insulin being a key, my body can't unlock the sugar to use it as energy to be able to actually help my body. It just kind of floats around in my system and makes me very poorly and basically makes it that my body tries to break down other like organs to try and create energy for myself because it can't get it from the sugar. My pancreas doesn't work, that's what I was gonna say. My pancreas doesn't work. Type one diabetes is not caused by your diet. It is not caused by eating too much sugar. It is a genetic mutation, if you wanna call it like that. I don't really know what you'd call it. Basically, it's in my genetics, but no one in my family has diabetes, which makes it a real sort of weird moment. Type 2 diabetes on the other hand is caused by diet. You are able with some forms of type 2 because the two sort of cross over sometimes. In some forms of type 2 diabetes you are able to put it into like remission so you're able to kind of use your diet and get rid of type 2 diabetes. Type 1, this is this is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life unless a cure is found. There's no diet, there's no exercise that will allow me to have a normal life. I'm gonna put it in quotes because I've lived with it for so long. This is my normal now. So that, in a nutshell, is what diabetes is. Obviously, there are gonna be ups and downs to this because it's a health condition, it's not easy. My favorite up <laughs> is when I have low sugars, called a hypo. I have hypo cravings, which can be really weird. One time I had a hypo, I had a glass of orange juice to bring it up and I craved a tuna mayo sandwich, which I then had to eat because that's all I wanted to kind of help myself, which was so weird. I've never craved anything like that before, but you do get some weird cravings. I can go from not being hungry to having a hypo and eating the whole fridge. And that's not even being dramatic. Like I could probably do that if I was having a hypo. The worst part about having a hypo is the feeling. I get so shaky. I also have this weird thing. Anyone with diabetes, please comment below if you get this as well. When I have a hypo, my tongue goes numb. And it's only recently happened. I don't know whether I should get it checked out or whether it's something I'm now gonna have to live with that when I have a hypo, I get numb tongue, which is a bit of a weird one. I've never, I haven't actually heard of anyone getting that. Usually it's like shakes. It kind of, if I could put it into context, if you drink, that part where you're not completely drunk, but you're not completely sober, you struggle to think, everything's a little bit fuzzy, that is what a hypo feels like, which is why when I drink, which is very, very rarely, I either don't drink or I drink to excess so I don't feel that hypo feeling because it's a horrible, horrible feeling. Like 
I don't like feeling like I'm having a hypo and I definitely don't want to drink and make myself feel like I'm having a hypo. Another really difficult part is when I get like a cold or a virus, it takes my body a lot longer to get over things. As for coronavirus, which hopefully will be going soon, I'm very hopeful of that and I would like to have the vaccine. I have a flu jab every year. When I have a flu vaccine every year, I'm hoping that with COVID, that vaccine will work. But as for COVID, I'm not high risk. I'm no more likely to get it than anyone without diabetes. There is just a bit of a higher chance. I think it's about 5% if I read it right somewhere. There's a 5% chance that I will develop bad sort of a bad reaction to it, if that makes sense. So there's more, there's a 5% chance or 5% more likely chance of me going to hospital with it. I count myself very lucky with that because diabetes can be classed as like an autoimmune sort of disease, which means like your autoimmune system doesn't work as well as everyone else's and therefore illness hits you a little bit harder. I don't feel scared going out into the world. I feel quite comfortable to kind of be an average citizen. I wear my mask, I take all the precautions. I still go to my job at work, so I feel fine. One of the things I absolutely hate, and it's more when I was first diagnosed. So when I was first diagnosed, I used to do injections. And this kind of brings me on to how I treat my diabetes now. But I used to do injections. So every time I ate something, I would do an injection, which mentally is petrifying because no one wants to put anything into their body. A needle is not a nice thing. So when I was first diagnosed, having dinner, it would take me at least half an hour to do my injection before I could actually sit down and eat anything, which made dinner time a time I would dread because the food would already be on the table and I would still be sitting there trying to do this injection into my leg just so I could eat something. Also, the other issue I have, and I still have this now, is that if I calculate the carbohydrates, which is what you need to calculate to in the food to make the right injection so basically you count the carbohydrates in the food you're going to eat i then put it into my blood machine my blood machine then calculates the injection i need to make and then i make the injection sometimes you're like oh yeah i'll eat that one of the prime examples was i went to pizza hut when i was newly diagnosed i hadn't been diagnosed that long it was kind of new to everyone my whole family and i was like oh yeah i can eat that whole pizza injected for the whole pizza and then ate half of it which then meant I had to eat the whole pizza, otherwise I was gonna end up in a hypo because I had too much insulin working for the amount of carbohydrates I'd eaten. So it kind of, like, if you inject too much, your sugars will drop dramatically, which was gonna happen to me if I didn't eat this whole pizza, which made me very, very ill, and I did not like it one bit. So I kind of learned to naughtily inject after I eat, which is not a good way of doing it, but it's just because I don't have a massive appetite. If I don't fancy eating, I'll eat a little bit, but I can't tell you exactly how much I'm going to eat to be able to calculate the carbohydrates that I'm going to consume. My whole world revolves around maths. So I weigh things, I measure things, I then calculate the carbohydrate. I've got very good at estimating, so I can kind of look at a plate of food and go, mm, that's around this amount. And usually I'm quite spot on. I do have moments where I am either really far out and I end up having a high purr, which means my sugars go really, really high, which makes me very lethargic, thirsty. Kind of the symptoms of being diagnosed with diabetes. Um, you get very thirsty, tired, irritable. It's just not a very nice feeling. Or I over inject and then I end up having a hypo where my sugars drop dramatically and I end up not very well and end up eating more food. That's why me losing this weight was insane because the more insulin you have, it kind of makes you retain weight, which is why there is something called diabulimia, which is a eating disorder where people with diabetes won't inject for any food that they eat and they'll just eat it, which is severely dangerous. You basically can put yourself at risk of something called DKA, which is a diabetic coma where your body has too much sugar in its system and can't cope, which can happen before you're diagnosed. Like a lot of people that are newly diagnosed, go into DKA because they don't recognize the symptoms. I will list all symptoms down below just to kind of raise awareness because I don't think a lot of people are taught about it at school. I went to school and there was no one that had diabetes and by the time I left, there was three of us in my year that had diabetes. So anyone can get it. You could be sitting at home and being like, oh, I'll never get that. But it could happen to you. There's nothing 
saying that it definitely won't. There's obviously nothing saying it definitely will. It could happen to anyone. And now that I have diabetes, my whole family are more at risk of developing diabetes, whether that be type one or type two. They're just more at risk of developing any of those types. So yeah, it is tough. So I have days where I hate my diabetes, where I sit there and think, I wish I didn't have this. Like, why, why me? That's basically what I used to ask, especially when I was first diagnosed. It would be, why me? Why, why did I get burdened with this? My brother is healthy. He doesn't have any issues. And I have type 1 diabetes and a nut allergy. What, why me? I also have other medical conditions which have come along with diabetes. I have an underactive thyroid, which is the only one. There isn't any others. I have an underactive thyroid, which basically means I don't actually understand the underactive thyroid bit. And I don't know why that comes sort of, you get tested for it when you have diabetes, but I'm guessing because it's a hormone as well. But yeah, I have days where I just, I just hate it. Absolutely hate it. And I feel like I have it less now, now that I'm older, I kind of just accept it. There's nothing I can do to change it. I can just do things which help me to cope with it. And Callum is so, so supportive. He'll get up at two o'clock in the morning and run downstairs and get me some orange juice or something like that to treat my hypo so that I don't have to leave the bed and I don't risk like falling down the stairs or passing out somewhere, which has never happened to me, touch wood. I've never been into hospital for a or stayed overnight at hospital for a diabetic related issue. I've been into hospital for an issue where I forgot to take my background insulin, which kept keeps your sugars like a steady level all day. And I was in for about two hours and they told me what to do. But that's the only time I've been back into hospital since I was diagnosed back in 2011, which is incredible. Like I know so many people that have been into hospital multiple times in one year, let alone in the whole time of having diabetes. So I feel very, very blessed. Uh, how I treat, I say treat, so how I manage my diabetes day to day. I am very lucky. I have quite good control of my diabetes and I also have a very good support system. Everyone around me helps me. Everyone in my family kind of tries to understand and supports me in everything, which is lovely. Like I could not ask for anything better from any of my family. So how I treat it is I used to have a AccuCheck pump. I don't think I have one anymore. And this has a tube in on it. So it could either be a meter or I think it was 30 centimeters was the smallest one. And it used to connect to a cannula on like my stomach or on my thigh, mainly my stomach or my back. And it would give me my insulin. So I basically check my sugars. I would then tell my blood machine how many carbs I was gonna have. And it would automatically put that insulin into my system without me having to do the um, injections, which used to take me half an hour to do. And that was incredible, but the tubing was so inconvenient, like seriously inconvenient. But I have it all funded by the NHS, which is incredible. Like I don't know what I would do without the NHS. Could you imagine? I worked it out and to pay to keep me alive just for the basics would be my mum's wages, which was about at the time, I think it was 17 grand, something like that, or 20 grand, something like that, just to keep me alive. That, that wasn't anything else, that was just to pay for all my medical supplies. So I don't have a clue how people in America do it. Like, I think I would be dead by now. There are so many stories that I hear of people that can't afford insulin, so they restrict their insulin intake which is where diabulimia comes from and where DKAs come from. Like, that is insane. People should not be having to do that. It should be mandatory that everyone that has diabetes, especially type 1, where you have no choice. There, there was no choice in getting it. Usually with type 2, and I say that in a broad usually. There are so many cases that are different. Um, but usually you've been notified that if you carry on down this path, you're going to end up with diabetes. But definitely type one, it should be mandatory that everyone gets their diabetes care paid for. Like there, there should be no question about it and I think it's disgusting. So yeah, I wouldn't be able to afford it if the NHS wasn't around. So after three years of having that pump, I then went on to the Omnipod. So I get them in little boxes and this is what it looks like. So this is what sits on my skin. This is the needle that you put the insulin into to actually put it into this to load it up and I'll do a whole video on how I change this and kind of the whole process of that but that is what I use for my insulin intake. 
I'm also very lucky. I don't have to prick my finger anymore as much as I used to. I was on something called the Dexcom, which would continuously monitor my blood sugar all day, every day. It would beep at me if I was having a hypo. It would notify Callum if I was having a hypo. So it was, it was really, really good. Unfortunately, I became very allergic to that. Like I was having severe allergic reactions to the sticky. So therefore, I spoke to my diabetic team and they put me on something called the Freestyle Libra which there was a big debate about in parliament because the prime minister Theresa May the old prime minister had type 1 diabetes and she used the freestyle libra but it used to be a postcode lottery so if i lived in crobra for example i could have got the freestyle libra before i got the dexcom and i wouldn't have had to have my grandparents pay for the dexcom for 2 years which was 150 pounds a month it is insane. So I went to the diabetic team and I said, I'm having this really bad reaction. I don't really want to go back to pricking my finger. Can you help me? And they basically said, yep. Yeah. And within a month, I was on the course to get my Libra. And I've now had my Libra for a month. And you wear it on your arm. This is my Freestyle Libra. Uh, you see a lot of people wearing it. I've seen so many people wearing one. They are tiny, 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 tiny. And again, I will show you how I put that on. It will also be a step-by-step -step for people that are newly diagnosed or newly been given the Freestyle Libra or the Omnipod. All I do is scan my Libra with my phone and it just tells me what my sugars are. It's a little less accurate than pricking your finger but it gives you a general idea of where your sugars are it also gives you an arrow on where it's going and also you can see a trend of where it's come from and it makes it easier to monitor and make sure that you're healthy so i quite like that honestly i think that if i hadn't become allergic to the Dexcom, I would have still had that to be honest. But I'm gonna do a video on both of those because they're both due changing tonight. So I thought I'd do a video on them. Yeah, that is that is kind of diabetes in a nutshell. That is me and diabetes, which is crazy. And I've lived with it for nearly 10 years. But as I said, comment below if you have any questions and also comment below what your hypo symptoms are if you are diabetic. I'd love to meet you guys. I don't actually have that many diabetic friends. I have one diabetic friend called Alice and she is absolutely lovely. And it makes it really nice to be able to communicate with people because it's easy for like friends and family to be like, we're going through it with you. But they're not, they don't understand the like mentality of diabetes and how it really affects people. So yeah, I would love to hear from you guys, but I'm gonna quickly go off camera and do my mascara and my lipstick and then I'll be back. Okay, so I finished my makeup, love it. It's my usual sort of go-to makeup that you guys have seen on my channel so many times, but I have loved talking about this with you guys. It has felt like a weight off my shoulder and I don't know why because it's not like a massive burden but it's sort of invisible like no one would know like if you looked at someone and if you line people up along a wall you would not be able to pick out people that had type 1 diabetes I can guarantee you because there's no like mold that everyone fits into they're not fat they're not skinny like there's no mold like you could be fat or skinny you could be normal size you can be male female there's literally no mold that people fit into so it makes it really difficult because people don't recognize that you have an illness so yeah it is it is so nice to kind of get it off my chest and express to you guys what i go through sort of day to day obviously every day is different some days i have really good sugars some days i have really really bad sugars because different things affect different things when i'm on my period it's bad all good I can't really tell and my mood affects it and if I'm stressed or anxious that affects it so it is a very difficult thing to live with but I wouldn't change it because it makes me who I am I feel like I'm more interesting with it than I was without it so that's kind of a weird thing to think about but yeah that's how I feel but as I said please comment below I'd love to make a community of people if you have any questions about diabetes please comment them below and I will try and reply to every single comment. Obviously I will because there's like hardly any comments. But anyway, I will reply to every single comment from you guys and answer any questions that you have. And if there's like a broad spectrum of people asking the same question, I will make another video for you guys answering some more questions. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see me change my Omnipod and my Libra for you guys on camera so that you can see how I change everything 
and if you're scared of needles I would not watch those videos because there are going to be a few needles in it but anyway I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video bye guys